cold out here today. Well, folks, this is Robert Milton for Hobby Hardwood. Today, we are going to be fixing our driveway. It's got a good sub base of crushed concrete. It's got a nice layer of gravel on top of it. The problem is it sees a lot of use. We have log trucks, semi trucks, pickup trucks, passenger cars. We have customers. We have quite a bit of road traffic on this, on our driveway. And it's been raining a lot lately, and now we're starting to get potholes, and potholes just get bigger. If you have a gravel driveway and a tractor and a landscape box, and you want to get your gravel driveway to last a fairly long time, it's been almost two years since I've had to regrade this. So it's been a while. On the other hand, it's time. So I'm not looking at this just as a way to regrade it and be done in five minutes. I'm looking at this as a way to regrade this so I don't have to do it again for a while. One of the most important parts of grading a driveway or any gravel road or any road for that matter, it's got to put a crown on it. The crown is in the middle. Uh, you want the water to drain off to both sides. You do not want it to stand and puddle and you don't want it flat. We're gonna dig these out. It's like a cavity in a tooth. You just can't ignore it and you just can't put fresh gravel on top of it because what's gonna happen is it's gonna wash out. So one of the first things you have to do is you have to adjust the angle of the implement. There's two cutting blades on the thing. One's on the back. One's on the front. So in order to get a good crown, You've actually got to put a little bit of tilt on the blade. So on this particular tractor, you adjust the tilt with one of the link arms. You just simply unscrew it and make it longer. That drops this side, raises that side, and now you've got some angle. So you want to be cutting here, riding high on this side, so I can get you a better angle. What that'll do is it throws all the dirt from this direction, all the gravel to that direction, taking gravel from the outside, moving it up to the crown of the road. Obviously, you can only do half the side at one time. So as we cut this gravel, we're going to try to displace it back up to the center of the road, and while we're doing that, we're going to cut those potholes down, too. So we've got these potholes fixed. You also notice where I, near the end, I put the bucket down and started dragging off to the edge. That's really important because since there was a pothole, it means it probably trapped water. So you always wanna have your edge sloped down, certainly for the first few critical rain showers when the road's gonna to try to heal up and reseal. You do not want any puddles at all, what you want 
it's like what I got. You want to to the crown of the road. You want a good scrape slope, and then it falls off to the ditch right there. Pull up some of this loose stuff from here. Get it under the wheel tracks again. Try to you can see where this kind of is up and it goes down and then comes up. I want to get all that and move it up. done the sides look good you can see a clear line in the crown of the road the sides taper off cleanly and all the water should drain off without issue no puddles no potholes hey folks I don't know if you've noticed it but uh, my landscape box is a little bit well used it's had quite a few modifications to it and I thought you guys might be interested in it um, one of the primary things is it's set up to carry two chainsaws. When you go into the woods, you need a chainsaw. My rule of thumb is if you need one chainsaw, you're probably going to need two chainsaws because sooner or later you're going to get one hung up, stuck, something. The idea is that the dogs slide into these covers. It keeps them there and then you can run a bolt here through the back of the handle keeps them from coming out. I also have my felling wedges here and uh, you can't go into the woods without a felling wedge. Uh, some of these are slightly well used but you know that's what we bought them for. Never use a metal felling wedge. Sometimes you'll hit the tip with your chainsaw so you always use plastic. I've also got several hundred pounds of weight plates welded on to the end of the box, to the sides of the box. Most landscape boxes are way too light. You got to put some weight on them. We're talking sear steel. They only dig in if they have mass. They can't float. We've got big weight plates welded on this side too. Another thing you'll notice is this my teeth, although reversible, these are worn down pretty hard. A lot of times I don't use the teeth. Sometimes you have to, sometimes you don't. Um, another little trick I got is I cut a hole right back here with a cutting torch. And now I just slid a trailer ball, a receiver, into this cross tube. So anytime I need to move a trailer, I just simply back up, raise the ball, go under the trailer, and I drive off. Now you can see that this thing has been used for a little bit of pushing and shoving. It's got a few little dents and dings in it. Chip's doing what Chip does best. He's watching me. Isn't that right, Chip? Somebody's coming home. Martha's coming home. And I just noticed she's got a headlight out. Gotta fix that. And the chip's ready to go as soon as she gets out of the truck. Go on, Chip. Go on. He's got to go say hi to mama. And if you don't mind, and you enjoyed watching the video, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button. Let us know that uh, this is something you enjoyed watching. If you'd like to see something else, tell us in the comments. And we appreciate you guys watching, and have a good day.